Hi my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. Today we start Just Add Shortcake. There it is. It's going to be so fun. We're going to make lots of strawberry blocks. Well, 16 actually. So four in each row and they're nice and big and yummy. Look at them. Just look at them up close. So what we're going to do today is talk about, and I'm going to show you making the quarter square triangle and give you a plan for working on these. And also when we come back after doing that, I will look at the Secret Lives of Color for today, which is block number 49. We're almost to that magical 50. So let me just scan the quilt here and I'll scan it again when we come back. So you can see all of the, the blocks and um, on my website today, if you have the kit, you, um, you're getting these exact fabrics. And if you don't have the kit yet, you can go get it. Uh, but uh, isn't that cute? so so cute all right so let's just go ahead and dive into that so we're going to make strawberries aren't they cute so i put a couple of them up here what i'm going to do is show you all of them in the birdsong fabric so uh, with the kit this is the fabrics that you have and then our plan i'm going to walk through what we'll do because uh it will take a couple weeks but we'll be doing this so long so if you haven't got your kit yet, you can certainly go and get that and have it in time because it'll, it'll be fun. So we're not, we're not in a rush to work on this, okay? So we'll take our time and have a good, have a good time doing it. So we are going to approach this with the star first. Uh, let me just show you all the blocks. What you will have is two blocks made of each of the same fabric. And you'll note, and I'll talk about this again, that this part of the star is shifted down into the strawberry. So it is made from the strawberry fabric. So you have two of each of these colors. So I just wanna show you all the colors. Some of these are hanging up on the wall behind me. Isn't the stripe cool? I love it. There's the dots, uh, and then we have a couple of green strawberries because you know they're not quite ripe yet. <laughs> and the big print, I think this might be my fave. Might be my fave. And here's the two color. And this is the other big, you know, really big print. Ah, so cute. And the one, with the the sit kind of print with the pink background, and then this medium scale. This is my other fave. <laughs> Gotta have faves, right? So what we're going to do is make the uh, all the points for the strawberry this week. You know, make all of these quarter square triangles. And then if you want, you can make all the tops. You know, you could work on that. But I'd like you, if you are game for this, let me just talk to you up here, is I always think it's great to do one block. Um, now you could, now some of you like to do a test block where you actually use different fabric and you make a block, or you might have enough extra fabric. If you're doing the kit, um, just consider it that'll be part of your block, but you probably have enough. Um, but I don't wanna say that for sure. <laughs> don't want you to mess up. So if you like to do test blocks, if that's really your thing, then pull some other fabric. But I think making one block from the kit is a, is a good thing, or making one block from any pattern is a good thing when there's a lot of them that repeat. Because if you want to do some sort of chain piecing where you're working and you're sort of you know doing a whole lot of this, then a whole lot of that section, you want to validate that it looks right, that you've read the instructions properly so that you don't accidentally cut all of your squares, you know, the wrong size or something like that. Or you make it with some fabric that you're like, oh, that didn't turn out like I thought. So it's good to do one block. And I am all for making the block in the for the quilt. I am not one that, you know, I prefer to make my first block be the block that'll be in the project. But, you know, test blocks are also amazing and they can work out nice. So what I want to have us focus on this week is make all of the quarter square triangles, all of them for all 16 blocks or 16 blocks. So it's not really that big. Uh, and then if you want, you could sew the top portion, but just make one strawberry first. So I'm going to walk through this, the quarter square triangle um, process again. It is so cool and it is so easy. I think a lot of us get afraid of it and think, oh, it's hard, but it's not hard at all. It's super, super easy. So I have a few, uh, I have pieces um, in, in progress. And so I can show you how to do it. And of course I use thread that matches. 
Can you see it? Can you see the thread? So I stitched, this is just like a half square triangle. You're going to stitch on either side, okay, to, because you're going to make two half square triangles. So we stitched on either side. Let's get in the camera. And then I will um, slice it down the middle. And I have half square triangles. We do not trim them. We are using them as is, just like this, so no trimming. So you're going to make all the half square triangles, and then you'll remember that some of them will be made not with the light and the green, but will be made with the, um, with the squares for the strawberries. So you have uh, eight different fabrics, and you're going to need those as well. So the pattern all talks about that. So now you'll press these open. So you'll go to your um, iron, pre I press to the dark side, so press to the dark side, and now I have these pressed. So here's the back, right, so they're, they're pressed to the dark. And now what you're going to do is with these, is you're going to um, layer them, one on top of the other, matching opposite. So I have the green on this side, and then the opposite side is the green when I lay the two half square triangles on top of each other. And these are a bit oversized, so you don't have to get too persnickety with it, uh, because you're going to trim, trim down. When you make this unit, you'll be trimming down. Okay, so here I can show you one that's kind of wooly, right? <laughs> is that a term for quilting? I don't know, they use that in the gardening stuff. It's a bit wooly because it's oversized and it's not actually square because this hasn't been trimmed yet. Now you can peek, and I highly recommend you do this. Take a little peek and be sure because we are going to do half square triangles again by going on either side of that center line. But peek first, yes, see? This is the half square triangle. That's what we're building. So there'll be one on either side. Now if you would like to draw the line with a marker, I've got one of these iron away markers. You could just draw here, and then you will sew on either side of that. And here we go to show this piece is, is already, I, I use the laser on my baby lock, so you can see the, the sewing line. Now I will cut this in half. And when I cut this in half, and open it, there is the quarter square triangle. Perfect, right? Isn't that awesome? And it's really easy to nest them and make them perfect with this technique. It is so, so easy. Okay, now I have this sort of wooly one. It needs to be trimmed up. And these are trimmed to uh, two and a half per the pattern. So I'm gonna remind you, now I'm doing this upside down. Let me see if I can kind of go sideways, so maybe you can kind of see it a little better with me with the markings. Maybe, yeah. I'll try to shift even more sideways and not get my hand in the way. So what I'm trying to do here is I want to get the two and a half and the two and a half. These have to be right on the seam. This two and a half has to be on the seam. This diagonal line has to be on the seam. The two and a half at the top has to be on the seam, and the two and a half on this side has to be on the seam. You've got to hit all those markers. If I just come in here and do it like this, like randomly trim two sides, it is not is most likely not going to work out. So I position everything in advance so that I know I'm hitting all the marks I need to hit. Okay, now I trim two sides. And my hand will be in the way from this angle. Let me see if I can trim it. See, I shifted it. Okay, I've got to face myself. I've got to face myself, otherwise I can't use this. Okay, so you trim two sides. And now I have to trim the other two sides. And that, this time now, I should be at two and a half right in the corner. This two and a half should hit that edge right here where the, the green stops and the white starts. That two and a half will hit there and the same up on this corner. Okay. There we go. Got it. And then trim the other two. And now I have the exact size that I need. Now when you do, let me scroll out. I'm gonna bring the strawberry block over here. So what you have are these units 
of the quarter square triangles with the green and the white for the stems of the strawberries. So you have four of them, one, two, three, uh, three of them, sorry, three of them in the green and the white. You have four all together. The fourth one will be with the strawberry fabric. So that's the fourth one and you have three of the others. So once you make all these, then you could sew the, uh, the tops here this week. But go ahead and make one strawberry. Make enough to make one and then keep, you know, whatever, like you'll have this extra because it makes two at a time. So you'll make your second strawberry with that fabric. But go ahead and make the one strawberry and see how you like it. See that it worked and the process worked for you. Okay. <laughs> that, that is strawberry making. I think we need to uh, have, I don't know, like a taste test of strawberry shortcake this week because that's what the pat Wendy called the pattern, just add shortcake. <laughs> so you got the strawberries, you gotta, you gotta add the shortcake. So I think I definitely need some shortcake this week. And, you know, you can, you can put them on sort of sweet biscuits. You can put them on those sort of spon spongy cakes that you buy already made. If you have other strawberry shortcake ideas or how you make it, uh, share it in the comments. Share it when you share your block progress. I would love to hear about it. Okay, I have a little tiny little clip here where I was doing some fabric folding. I wanted to just show you, it's kind of how the stuff comes off these bolts or doesn't come on the bolts, but should have, you know, been, but they normally would be. But I wanted to show you how I have to handle it. Take a look. I wanted to show you this little segment about how the fabric from Benertex comes to me, my fabric lines, because it does not come on a regular bolt like you see. It came originally on these tubes, which was pretty nice, uh, but to save for shipping and weight, they're not sending on the tubes anymore because that's they're heavy. The tubes are heavy, they're sturdy. So instead I'm getting the fabric coming like this, which is all folded up, but it is still open. It is not folded like it was on a bolt. It is folded the whole length of fabric. So here is, you know, here's the raw edge, like right here, and this is the whole length of fabric. So this is a bit unwieldy to cut. You know, this is my Promise Me. This is the Navy Promise Me fabric. Um, so it's a bit unwieldy. So what I have to do is open this up and fold it in half to meet salvage to salvage. Cause right here, this is one edge of the salvage and here is the other end. So what I have to do is open the whole bolt or the whole stack of fabric, whatever. I think this is like a three yard piece and then I will fold it in half and then go ahead and sort of flip fold it so that at least now it is salvage to salvage and I can easily put it on my cutting table and cut it. So I just thought I'd show you that little thing because I have to do that for every fabric that comes in. <laughs> All my fabric lights. Let me show you another couple blocks up close. There's one with the, the largest print in bird song. Isn't that sweet? Ah, from a distance, doesn't that look so yummy? And then here's the, the ones that are not quite ripe yet. When Wendy was designing this, she uh, told me that she really wanted to do this with the bird song. She just popped into her head, this looked perfect, this fabric for um, this pattern. But the, you know, the balance of the colors, she was gonna have these kind of oddball two that would need to have three fabrics. And she really wanted to do them as every block, you know, every strawberry, there's just two of them. So she thought, oh, I can have some green strawberries in there. And it was just brilliant. So it just gives that that extra little fun, that extra little spark. Ah, okay, so our block number 49 for the secret lives of color is the color woad. There we go. And this is, uh, there's some interesting stuff in here about the dye and how it was developed. You know, like a lot of these dyes, they're extremely labor intensive, but there's a couple little things that were interesting in here. Um, the one was the classical writers described the Celts making themselves blue, either dabbling it on before battle or tattooing it directly into their skin. And the, they have found um, remains with the tattoos, but they can't tell if it's actually from woad or not. And the other thing was that I found interesting is the color blue, when it first was being made available enough uh, production-wise so that everybody could wear it, 
people, there was no like um, royalty that had already claimed blue so that everybody could wear blue because it wasn't for a select class of people, which I thought was really nice. Maybe that's why everybody loves blue. So maybe I should show you my block. I forgot. Here we go. Here's mine. And I pulled this, the fabrics, from one of these variegated prints. Let me pull back here. See, it's got from dark to light. And sort of this mid-range is what was matching. Um, I think maybe I didn't get as enough of the mid-range, but I like it. I think it's really good. Really, really good. Okay, we're on Just Add Shortcake Day. Strawberries galore. I cannot wait to see your strawberries. I cannot wait. So, all right, my friend, here we go. <laughs> Strawberry making time. I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.